Nathan Cleverley was once considered one of the most promising talents on the UK domestic scene. He was a two-time light heavyweight champion and had a career that ended very abruptly. Some would say his career was somewhat anticlimactic. Nordic Warrior here, hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to my retrospective boxing series. Today we're going to be talking about former two-time light heavyweight champion Nathan Cleverley. So Nathan Cleverley turned professional in 2005 at the age of 18 after a limited amateur career. Interestingly enough, he actually started his career in the welterweight division. His debut was on the undercard of Alex Arthur vs. Boris Sinitsyn. Most of his early fights consisted of four-rounders in small hall shows against journeymen with a slow but gradual increase in opposition, as you might expect. The first serious domestic level test of his career came in 2008 against Tony Oke for the vacant Commonwealth light heavyweight title. He defended his title three times, winning each time by an early KO and then took on the undefeated Danny McIntosh for the vacant British title, winning by an impressive 7th round stoppage. He had one defence of the British title, stopping Courtney Fry in the 8th round after a dominant performance, before stepping up and taking on Antonio Brancaleon for the vacant European title. Cleverly destroyed Brancaleon, stopping him in the 5th round. He then faced the toughest test of his career so far, taking on the tough, undefeated Armenian contender, Karo Murat. In what was a great fight that was competitive all the way through, cleverly stopped Murat with the referee and ringside doctor pulling Murat out before the start of the 10th round. The fight was an eliminator to face WBO world champion from Germany, Jürgen Bremer. With Bremer having some legal trouble behind the scenes, the WBO ordered an interim fight between Nathan Cleverly and Najib Mohammadi in a very close back and forth fight which neither guy was able to really control. Cleverly was able to win the fight with a very close and very competitive unanimous decision, winning the WBO interim title. After becoming interim champion, he was then scheduled to fight the champion Jürgen Bremer in London on the undercard of George Groves vs James DeGale. However, just a week before the fight, Bremer reportedly suffered a cut in sparring and had to be pulled out of the fight. He was then stripped of the title and cleverly was instated as the full champion. As a late replacement, they attempted to bring in the undefeated British and Commonwealth champion Tony Bellew, who seemed to have a grudge against Cleverly. However, Bellew failed to make weight for the fight on short notice, and the last minute replacement they brought in was Polish contender Alexei Kuziemski. In what in my opinion was shaping up to be a pretty good fight, Cleverly won by a premature stoppage in the fourth round, one of those classic British stoppages. Later that year, the Bellew fight was rescheduled and the fight eventually took place in Liverpool. Cleverly won the fight by a very close majority decision in what was a great fight and Fans were divided on who they thought won. Nonetheless, it was a good performance from both guys, and it won both of them a lot of fans since it was probably the most memorable fight either of them had. After beating Bellew, he took on fringe contender Tommy Karpensky over in Wales and won a very easy unanimous decision. He then went over to America and won an 8th round stoppage over Sean Hawke. He then had what in my personal opinion was probably the best performance of his entire career, schooling the tough contender Robin Krasnicki winning by a wide unanimous decision before attempting to negotiate some unification fights. At that point in time, Cleverly's promoter Frank Warren was trying very hard to secure a fight with the then IBF champion Bernard Hopkins. However, Hopkins refused to take the fight, and instead Cleverly decided to take on the undefeated Russian knockout artist Sergei Kovalev. Kovalev was a slight favourite going into the fight, but many fans and media pundits in the UK gave Cleverly a decent chance based on his stamina, work rate, and the fact that he had home advantage. Unfortunately for Cleverly, it turned out to be a complete disaster for him, getting absolutely destroyed in four rounds. The beating that Cleverly took was so one-sided that I can remember at the time there being some speculation from fans that he may decide to retire shortly after. Nonetheless, he decided to continue his career after the Kovalev fight and decided to move up to the cruiserweight division. After two easy knockout wins, he had a rematch with his old rival Tony Bellew. In what was one of the worst fights I have ever seen, cleverly lost a very close split decision. The fight was extremely boring, with Bellew using his size and weight advantage to just lean on and wrestle cleverly the whole fight, and it was in no way reminiscent of the great first fight they had. He decided to move back down to light heavyweight and had a first round knockout victory over Thomas Mann, he then went back over to America and took on Polish contender Andrzej Fonfara, losing a very close unanimous decision in what was a great fight. Despite losing to Fonfara, Cleverly actually performed very well and showed tremendous heart and a tremendous chin as well as very good stamina. 
He clearly felt like he had something to prove after the Bellu and Cleverly losses and showed that he had at least one good fight left in him. His next fight he received a surprise title shot against the now WBA champion Jürgen Bremer who he had been scheduled to fight years earlier back in 2011. The fight took place in Germany and I can only describe it by saying it was one of the most bizarre fights I have ever seen. Basically Jürgen Bremer dominated every single round and appeared to be winning the fight comfortably. Cleverly looked extremely poor in the fight and his reflexes and timing looked completely shot to me and his defense was almost non-existent. However, just when it looked like the writing was on the wall, after the sixth round, Jürgen Bremer decided to quit on his stool. He claimed that he had an arm injury, but the fight was so one-sided that he was so far ahead on the scorecards, and he should really have been able to get through the fight and win when you think about it. I remember after the fight for a time there was some speculation that the fight may have been fixed, partly due to the fact that Bremer had some sort of legal situation with his promoter. One of them real inconceivable situations in boxing. Nevertheless, Nathan Cleverly had one title defense, losing in devastating fashion to Badu Jack by a fifth round TKO, retiring shortly after. So how good was Nathan Cleverly? How would he have done in today's era or any era besides his own? Let's talk about it. So I'm gonna level you guys. Nathan Cleverly, in my personal opinion, was a fighter who was talented but extremely poorly developed. He was trained by his dad Vincent for the most part of his career, who in all honesty was absolutely clueless about boxing. He was a good friend and admirer of Welsh legend Joe Calzaghe and you can clearly see that Cleverly and Vincent tried to model themselves after Joe and tried to emulate what Joe and his father did in boxing. The problem is that Cleverly had nowhere near the type of physical ability that Joe had nor did he have the vast amateur experience. Sure he had great stamina and work rate and he had a lot of heart and a fairly good chin, and he was always willing to take on tough competition, but that only takes you so far in boxing. His punching technique leaves a lot to be desired, and his defense was absolutely atrocious. The warning signs for Cleverly were all there in the very early part of his career, against the likes of Cairo Murat and Najib Mohammadi exposing his poor defense, and he never really made the adjustments he needed to. If he wanted to become a world-class fighter, he would have needed to do more. He also got utterly destroyed by Sergei Kovalev, the only true, real, prime, world-class elite fighter he ever fought, and even in his two world title wins, they were just sheer luck. I personally believed at the time, and still believe to this day, that back in 2011, Jürgen Bremer would have absolutely destroyed Cleverly, and even a shot 37-year-old Bremer was easily outboxing him before he quit for some reason. Nonetheless, I was actually a big fan of Cleverly, despite not rating him very highly. He was in some great fights and was always entertaining on a good night, the first Bellu fight and the Fon Farah fight being my favourite of his, but in all honesty, if he were around today, I give him little to no chance against any of the top light heavyweights. The likes of Arta Baturbiev or Dmitry Bivol would use him as target practice, and even the top contenders today would probably beat him. When I think through the history of the light heavyweight division, I personally think Cleverly was very fortunate to be around when he was, because he had the right promoter at the right time to ensure he became champion against fairly easy competition. So that pretty much sums up my views on Nathan Cleverly. He was fun to watch, had an entertaining fighting style, and he seemed like a very nice, honest, humble, down-to-earth guy, and he was very easy to root for. I had no problem with the guy, but he just wasn't a world-class fighter in my opinion, just a domestic level fighter with a bit of talent and a bit of athleticism who was fortunate and lucky to win two world titles. Thanks for watching guys, I really enjoyed making this video, I really enjoy doing these retrospective videos and I'm glad to see they seem to be doing quite well with my subscribers. Um, if, once again if you have any suggestions let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and God bless.